Governor Samuel or Tom has alleged that he is being targeted to be killed by those he described as group of elites. The governor specifically mentioned an emir as one of those who leveled all manners of accusations against him in an attempt to set him up for hatred and vilification, even attacks. Benin State Governor Samuel Otom has disclosed that since 2017, when the open grazing prohibition and ranches established law was enacted, he has escaped seven assassination attempts on his life. He added that 18 out of the 23 local government areas of the state are already under siege. Joining us to discuss this live is Honorable Angu Ongu. He's a North Central Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization. Angu, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Hey, thank you very much. It's good to be it's good to be in your studios again this evening. Happy New Year. Same to you. Um, this is not the first time that um, Governor Autumn is raising this alarm. And of course, I, just as I said in my opener, he has claimed that at least seven attempts has been made upon uh, on his life, rather. And, uh, and then, of course, this press release is coming as, not necessarily as a shocker, but then should this be a cause for concern, especially for a governor um, uh, in a state like Benue? Thank you very much. Uh, Benue State has been besieged with issues of harassment killings over the years. And for some of us personally, we've been in the forefront of giving those issues, uh, making them become agenda, bringing them to agenda status in the media, through the society, uh, civil society organizations, and through several other means like being on the street, agitating, protesting. Uh, we've tried to bring those issues to the fore. And it's, it's to say that it's quite unfortunate that human lives, issues that are associated with human lives, uh, are being reduced to issues of uh, personality clashes. It is unfortunate that that is happening. We have left the real issues and we are making it uh, look more personal than to be about humanity. Mm. Uh, having said that, uh, it has also been in the news that His Excellency Dr. Samuel Oton, the Governor of Benue State, have made a uh, Several of those allegations of uh, his life being threatened for standing up for his people. Uh, but I feel that this person, His Excellency himself and the former army of Kanu, are leaders. And they have to chart the course for a new country. I'm sorry, when you say it has a new cost, Governor Autumn is one of the most vocal governors um, that we know coming from your region of the country. Now, we also, just as you said, have seen all the attacks um, that has bedeviled um, Benway State and other states around that region. But he seems to be the most vocal person. What are the costs that they're trying to chat that they, I mean, because if they, he's been screaming at the top of his voice and nothing's been done. Um, what makes you think that that cause that you're talking about being charted would be charted if the people that are, are supposed to be listening and taking action are not doing so? Yes, I, I began by saying that even before Governor Otto, we become vocal. Some of us were already vocal on the street. We are already lending our voices and even taking several risks. On, uh, on the issues of headsman killings. And I say that because these killings are becoming incessant, they have become perennial, they have become annual, they have become seasonal. And there are issues. Why I said that is to say that, look, there should be back end approaches in handling crisis situation. There should be issue methods of 
alternative dispute resolutions. Have we come to the round table to discuss this issue? Have we created for us where we can discuss some of these issues? Because I must confess that the law, the Bailey State Open Grazing Prohibition Law, is a law of the people. But that covers both the herders and the farmers, the pastoralists and the farmers. So, but we notice there are gray areas that are not even within the law, that are outside the law. And what are these issues gray? of terrorism? What, is, what exactly are these gray areas? I, 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 one of them is to say that issues of terrorism, some of those issues, it will, it will surprise you to, for me to say that, look, are not particularly peculiar with Benue State. The security challenges that are facing our country in Zamfara, in Southern Kaduna, in Nasarawa, in Baulu, in, in Sokoto, even in Kasina State, where Mr. President come from. These criminal elements have taken over our country or are taking over our country, are taking over our highways, kidnapping, maiming, killing. I would like to say that it is because of the ineptitude of the APC-led government that we are having all of these issues. If we had a government that is dealing decisively with issues of insecurity, we we'll be having this conversation. Because Nigerians will be safe. Nigerians will feel that if they are going on a journey, they are safe on the highway. Farmers in Benue State, we know that they are safe when they go to their farm. But they are hoarded, maimed, and killed on their farms. It is very, very unfortunate what is happening. And it's to call on Mr. President to do something. There have been several calls if on Mr. President. If the President change the number within and uh, in uh, uh, the tone light of his administration, he can also I'm gonna I'm gonna just say this one more time there have been several calls of mr. president uh, the chief of army staff the whole security agencies within and without uh, Benway state and several other states I remember there was a time the governor of Zamfara um, said that you know um, the people of the state should maybe take up arms because they felt abandoned by the federal government so again what about a localized solution to the problem now let's go back to the fact that the governor is saying they're targeting him for elimination now there has been a report uh, by a coalition in benway states accusing members of the people's democratic party at the national level of you know um trying to attack governor tom's rally in benway now we all know that there's no love lost between the presidential candidate uh, the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, and some other people who are in support of him, um, with the G5 governors, where Governor Autumn belongs. And, um, and these coalition members are saying, well, there was a sponsored attack by members of the PDP at the top level. And, and I know that you're a member of the campaign organization. What, what would you like to say about that? Uh, I, I would like to say that, like I began saying before, Elections are not a do or die affair. Mm -hmm. After the elections, we still hope to have Nigeria as our country. We still hope to live as brothers and sisters. Even the thieves and the felonies still need to live together as brothers and sisters. So I understand that when elections are by the corner, very unscrupulous, nameless organizations or coalitions come together to heat up the polity. It is unfortunate, very, very unfortunate, that some of those coalitions that come out to make very weighty allegations are also sponsored 
uh, coalitions because you don't see them after elections. After elections, they, they, they dismantle uh, they, those uh, uh, coalitions and move to the next place where they will, they, 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 they will get brand envelope. Actually, there is no long loss between uh, His Excellency, the, the former Vice President of Nigeria and the People's Democratic uh, Party PDP presidential candidate with the G5 governors, which Governor Osama Otum is a part of. And like I, I said before, and I would like to reiterate, we should not take personal wars and elevate them to become state affairs. Because the, the, the war lost, all the issues that have been raised several times, for me, they seem too personal. But they if, seem to personal to elevate, uh, elevate them to state affairs. But if the governor, who is the chief security officer of a state, or the man who's manning affairs in the state, is being targeted, whether it's personal or not, should it not become an issue that affects the state? Imagine. It's, it's an issue of concern. So, like so what exactly do you mean that we're, he's making it personal as opposed to making it, uh, 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 rather elevating uh, I, it? I, to, I, I, to, uh, it was not about uh, threats to his life. Threats to life is something very serious. Every human being needs to take it myself to if I if we make a threat of my life, I will not hesitate to shout to the highest level that I'm being threatened. What I mean is the question who asked about people organizing to uh, start a, or attack you know a, a political gathering or something. That was what I was referring to. Okay. Not uh, on the issues of threats to life. And just like in the, in the press release that it's uh, in the public domain, uh, I would like to say, and also call on the Inspector General of Police, the DG of the SSS, to swing into action and uh, look at those allegations and get the substance out of it. And if anybody is uh, found wanting, they should face the law. The law should take its full course uh, where such uh, allegations were rooted on assassination attempt on uh, His Excellency Governor Sam Otom. So what I was saying is uh, those ad hoc organizations that come together for to, to get peanuts of politicians when elections are by the corner and they make the, the highest noise and end up hitting our polity. And we are saying that Nigeria is going to be here even after the elections. The chief man will still be alive, they have a planning man will still be alive, the Yoruba man will still be alive. So, such fit, uh, fifth columnist should uh, look elsewhere and not hit up the policy and create enemies of people that enemies that, that sometimes become generational. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. Honorable Angu Ongu is the North Central Zonal Coordinator of the Atiku Support Organization, and of course, he's from Bernie State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless you. All right. And that's it on the show tonight. But before we leave, we'll give you some of the highlights of the show this week. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. See you on Monday. But don't forget, PVC's collection is still on. Go get your PVC. Go to your local government headquarters where the INEC office is located and make sure that you get your PVC. Like I always say, it's your passport to a new Nigeria. Have a good evening and enjoy your weekend.